<laughs> no, um, yeah, we dude, didn't talk honestly, about coronavirus at all, which is kind of amazing. No, we didn't, and we shouldn't. Honestly, yeah. bro, right now, it's just about continuing to get better and using this time to continue to get better and, um, you know, thinking about, I mean, bro, like, I literally was, I did this the other day, bro. I literally sat upside down on my fucking, like, this and just was, and just looking at my room from a different perspective and new ideas were coming because I, I was, I was, I was, you know, willing to put myself in that position. And wow. when, when, when you force yourself to just put handcuffs on for a second, you have to think about what am I going to do right now that's going to please my, 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 the, my creative needs or my business needs. You'll find ways to apply this. You just have to look. You have to look hard enough and be disciplined about it. How's it going? It's going well, man. How are you? I'm good, man. Just, I, was, uh, I mean, literally, literally just, just kind of launched uh, my wine, my wine label. So literally just, uh, just kind of posted up about it. So I'm excited about it. Oh, fire. Yeah. So fire. So, so tell me a little bit about that. Oh, dude. Um, like two years ago, I was just chilling with one of my good friends, Bonnie. When we were talking, I was actually, I just kind of gotten out of like a kind of little, little heartbreak. And we were just talking about ways to, you know, heal and stuff like that. And somehow over our conversation of drinking a bunch of rosé, we were like, you know what? Let, let's start a wine label called Lovebirds. And literally right away, we just started going at it. And uh, we found a really awesome vineyard in Paso Robles, an amazing wine cultivator, and started trying different samples and growing and working with different artists to work on the branding. And it's been done for about six to, to eight months and been trying the wine and ha had a party and, you know, had everybody try the wine. It was just like an incredible so experience. Fun. And now... It's finally online. We're just selling online for right now and just kind of doing like the word of mouth thing. So it's um, available. But it's just, yeah, it's fire. Yeah. Lovebirdwine.com, baby. Fuck. Fuck. Wow. Dude, I got to try it. What kind is it? Um, it's rosé. Oh, amazing. Yeah. And we've got a red coming next as well. But I just like this, like I actually don't really like a lot of rosés, but this shit right here is like so tasty. Um. So, anyways, that I just I just was kind of doing so some fire, promo. bro. That's so fire. So yeah. I'm I'm trying to print out our notes right here be, or, or whatever, but I might just say, I might just go off the cuff and just try to like rock it, rock it. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's catch a vibe here. Let me just get my camera right here. Yo, you know what's crazy too is um yeah I kind of I stacked my camera up on some books just to give me a little bit better of an angle, but uh, yeah. I'm doing if you too. want to plug in your mic, you can do that too. I mean, I don't think it really matters. I, I've been like looking into how to do this a little bit. And yeah. I think it works best when, like, I, I just realized I need a USB mic. I have a couple of different type of mics. I need a USB mic, so I ordered one of those. And then Zoom just makes it so easy. But uh, this is awesome. I think, and I feel like our audio is going to be great off this, bro. Yeah, yeah. So anyways, this is, this is the student of the game pod, and really the goal here is... Um, student of the game? Let's get it. Yeah, yeah. I'm the student of the game, so it's like I'm just trying to learn from you, and I, I feel like so lucky and blessed to be able to call you a friend and, you know, yeah, like have, get, having the good fortune to have gotten to work with you before, and like I admire you as just an artist and a creative person and a human, so I'm just I'm you, excited man. to tap in. Thank you a lot, bro. I'm going to close this door real quick. But, um, yeah, anyways, so um, I'll probably do, like, a separate intro. But, like, cool. we've, already gotten okay. past the, we've already gotten past the point that you are uh, just a prolific music video director. And, you know, I, I feel like you're our favorite artist's favorite video director. Is that fair to say? I mean, that's, that's a really nice compliment. So I appreciate that. That's, that's fucking awesome. And, uh, you know, I try and, I try and keep the wheels turning. Absolutely. Um, I, I kind of wanted to start just really, really briefly, just on your background. Um, yeah. I don't want to get like too, too in depth on it, but just, um, 
tell us a little bit about like where you're from. I, I know some of this stuff, so it's not as interesting to me, but just to kind of catch the listener up on like, great. How you got to where you're at right now. Yeah. So, you know, born and raised in Berkeley, California, the Bay area, uh, went to, you know, all the, the public schools in Berkeley, you know, including Berkeley high school, which was, you know, had a huge influence on, you know, where I am right now, because it, it was kind of the Mecca and melting pot of all of like arts and culture and skateboarding and music and all that shit put into one place. And so no matter what, or who you hung out with, you were always, you know, in the middle of it all. And, um, you know, I definitely was not a kid that was like, you know, into school. So I wanted to go do other stuff, whether it was chill with my homies in the studio, whether they were making music or, you know, um, I also was huge on skateboarding. So I was always skateboarding in front of the camera and my friends were filming and my friends were editing. And all of that was just like, this huge kind of just blend of so much arts and culture. So that was definitely like my background that I think subconsciously led to where I am now, where I'm, you know, a director and creating full time. So dope. So dope. Yeah. There's such a cool like class of you guys that are all from like Berkeley, like uh, G easy, Lil B, um, Niles from the cataracts. And yeah, like, who, is there anybody I'm missing there that, that, um, that was just making it happen up there at that time? Um, I mean, man, every, like, it's crazy because, like, I feel like every, you know, couple years there was definitely, I mean, Dave Meyer is a huge music video director that's still going right now. It's went to Berkeley High, I mean, probably 10 years before oh, I did. Wow. Um, Andy Samberg, um, right. you know, amazing actor and a comedian. But, yeah, I mean, dude, like, it's crazy when you have, when you're close with people, that you see make it out of your area. And so like basically, because I was really close friends with all of my friends from the pack and like the cataracts and all of that, like seeing, seeing them create within our group and our circles, and then all of a sudden having it hit somewhere beyond the Bay Area was a huge influence for I think a lot of us to start creating and dreaming beyond the, you know, our, our kind of restrictions in, 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 of the Bay Area. And I think that was a huge influence on me to show that, you know what, you can do this. Like, it's okay to dream bigger than kind of what sounds realistic to say in person. And I don't know what I was dreaming towards at that time, but I knew I wanted to, you know, create art on a bigger platform and be able to create art that could, you know, influence and uh, affect a lot of people or just be an experience for people, make them happy, you know, whatever it was. Um, and seeing my friends do that at such an early age, I mean, in high school, it just kind of was like one of those things where it was like, you know, I got to do this shit too. Right. <laughs> like, let's go. Oh. <laughs> who got it? Who got it popping up there? Like first? I mean, the pack, the pack was like the first, you know, like artist or group or whatever it is that like all of a sudden was on MTV and like, you know, you like, you're like, yo, school. I like just got in a fist fight with young Al last week what the fuck is going on <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> like mtv right now like doing the bit like it was crazy so um that made everything so much more like okay this is like real this is something that's tangible this is something you can touch you just have to you know find your way in and put in the work to to make it happen happen and be great at your craft um so that was, you know, that was, that was pretty cool to be able to have that, you know, influence growing up. Right. That like, you can do it too mentality at like an early age. Like you're seeing these kids like kind of doing it on a global stage straight out of like, you just had first period with them and like, they're like exactly popping in the, in like the, the real world, the big world. Yeah. And it's like, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't, I wasn't like friends with, with g Easy at the time. But G Easy was G Easy with you know the cornrows and grill and like he was probably the only other like white dude with a grill at school. I had a grill as well, oh, and cool. I remember I was always hella mad that that fool had a grill too. And like <laughs> we'd like walk out each other in the hallway and kind of like me mug each other with our grills. And it's just so <laughs> you know ten years later we're working together and like you know are able to celebrate the camaraderie that we have you know from being from Berkeley High. And, 
you know, drinking from the same water fountains, you know, so to speak. So, so it's fire. fucking cool. Man. It's so it's, fire. It's definitely it's so such, fire. You know, in a cool way. Yeah. So I, I have like, I mean, the reason I'm doing this is for, there's, there's a couple of reasons I'm doing this, but I, I definitely like want to kind of help pass the rope back to like the younger version of me, the 18, 19, 20 year old who wanted to become a music manager. And at the time, you know, um, what is this, 2008, nine, it's like, there's not very much information. I'm kind of like just digging through Twitter feeds, finding out what everyone does and, and stuff like that. So I, I want to pass the rope back to those folks, but, I, but also selfishly, I just, I mean, someone as great as you and as prolific as you, I just feel like there's so many cool things that, that I can learn from you and, and apply it to my respective crafts. And, you know, and, and hopefully the listener will get something out of that too. But, um, great. But yeah, so I, love that. I think that there's these, there's these, like, there's, you know, the film world is just massive now, right? There's just so many creative kids that are just running around with DSLRs or I don't even know what they use nowadays, iPhones and are just like, making fucking magic. Um, yeah. I, I see a lot of stuff online kind of talking about, you, you mentioned not being like a good in school or whatever, but I see a lot of like stuff online, narratives online about film school and, yay or nay um what are your thoughts on, on that just as a whole i think that you know film school is a beautiful thing i also feel like you know right now at this point in time you know there's so much accessibility um online and being able to put your craft out and being able to network and there's all you have all the tools right here you know in your pocket you know what i mean the cameras on these motherfuckers are crazy these days so like i I just look at a classroom and I see, and the way that I like basically put, you know, my, my favorite kind of like view on a film set is every single person that's on my film set as far as crew are stimulated by something different. And if you put all of these people in a classroom when they're younger, you know, somebody was like stimulated by math. Somebody was stimulated by poetry. Somebody was stimulated by writing. Somebody was stimulated by getting up and making jokes. I was stimulated by getting the fuck out of that classroom and trying to figure it out on my own and learn with my own, you know, trial and error. And all of those people, you know, were ended up finding something that they were great at, whether it was, you know, being a cameraman or being a DIT or being a producer and being good with numbers or whatever it is. Right. But they're stimulated by something different. So I would never say like, oh, don't go to film school. If that's a way, if, if going to school and being and learning from a teacher or from textbooks is something that stimulates you and you find is really effective, then hell yeah, go learn like that. But right. if you have, but if you're one of those people like me where you have to just learn by trying it and you don't really like rules and stuff like that, there are so many different ways to try and figure it out and go create. And, you know, maybe you want to be a director. So you set out to be a director, but then you end up finding that you have this true love for, cinematography and then you find yourself you know becoming a a, a, a director of photography or cin cinematographer or maybe you were um going and directing your own stuff and editing it as well and then you're like oh my god wait i love editing I, this is where i'm best at i'm gonna be a professional editor for me right and i've talked to so many people because like when you think about film when you think about movies you say oh who who was that directed by right Right. So it's like the first thing that you think of when you don't know much about film or when you just grew up watching movies, you see directed by, but you don't realize how many people could contribute to these films to make them. It's an army. And um, I think that I was always really, uh, so anyways, I'm going off on a tangent, but, but okay. really like I would say for me, I couldn't do school. I had to go out and figure it out and learn every single tool on my own. And then I realized, you know what? I really am a director because where I, where I really thrive is working with people. I really thrive on communication and team building and leadership. That's, those are all things I really enjoy. I enjoy the psychology of it. I enjoy the preparation of it. And I enjoy the energy of it when you're in the moment on set putting something together. There, that, and that's where I have realized I am a completely different person when I'm on set and in the middle of it, I'm my very best self. Right. And 
you know what's the crazy? Best feeling in the world. Not, not to cut you off there is like I can just totally attest to that because just having worked with you on on Super Duper Kyle videos, two of them, like that is the energy that I get from you. It's like, I like on set, I'm like, dude, Colin is in flow. Like you're in a full flow state. You're like fully confident. You're fully, you're fully present. And, you know, I think that is, uh, it's funny because I, I wrote down here that I'm like, I wanted to, um, I, I wanted to ask you how you developed what I'm calling your superpower, right? And I'm, what I'm calling your superpower is, um, my mom would describe this as like a bedside manner. My mom's a nurse, right? And she's like, she'll talk about doctors and she'll be like, yeah, but he has a shitty bedside manner. And that's a lot of time. Bedside manner, I think, can be defined as how the doctor deals with the patient and how, how the doctor makes the patient feel, right? And so if you kind of uh, subtract that from the hospital and put it in the music video making world, I've never been around a director that, you know, me being side by side with my artists can make an artist and manager feel so comfortable and so confident in what they do. So, I mean, I just want to commend you on that. And, and like, you know, that's, that's, that's my version of what I think your superpower is. And I think we all have them. And I think when you find out what that superpower is, that is where you, that's your gift to the world. And that's where you need to dig in. So so yeah, you want to just talk Thank a little you, bit about bro. that? Maybe I'm missing the point, but but that, that's no, no, no. I think I think you fully get it, and I think it takes a long time to develop because I didn't really realize what that true superpower was until you know being ten years into it. And at the very beginning, what I thought being a director was was the guy that holds the camera, lights the set, edits the video, puts the whole thing together, and it was a one man band. And I really like took pride in that when I first started of being that guy. And then as I started to branch out and open up my mind to the idea of working with other people, which you should, I realized, holy shit, like I can be so much better and I can make my projects so much by, better by using the power of communication. Obviously, you need to know what you're talking about when you're dealing with different um, technical positions and the tools and everything like that. But if you have a general understanding, you don't have to be the best operator in the world. You right. just have to be able to um, communicate your vision in, in, a, in an effective way. And everybody takes in information in very different ways. So you have to be able to read into that and have the general intuition. And so now, you know, after going through that, that learning phase of over the years and then, you know, working my way up on sets, faking it to make it at the very beginning, because I didn't know what I was doing a lot of the times at the very beginning when all of a sudden I was getting thrown these massive videos, but I still had to have the confidence and I had to have the general follow my gut as far as what felt right. And then as I did that now, I really do, do take pride on being able to go to a set because I do run my own company and I also am the director. So there's two different cards you have to play here. You have to play, you have to make sure that yes, the artist is happy, you're getting the, a, a, a great product made, but you're also taking care of your client, you're making management feel good, you're making sure that everybody's heard and you're making sure that the label, who most of the times are paying for it, are also comfortable. So there's so many different positions that you have to juggle along with just your own team. So when you can basically orchestrate that and have it all run flow and, you know, my favorite feeling is wrapping a set and driving home and being like, damn, we did that. Like that was an incredible thing. There was 200 people on set today and every single person, you know, was, was just flowing together like watercolors. That's a, that's an incredible feeling. And I think we strive for that. And I'll back up a little bit because I think that I really do feel like, those skills, it's, it's, there is no way to just sit down and learn those skills. It, it really is something that comes from trial and error and working through it and continuing to work on your communication as a human being. But I do, and I was talking to my dad about this yesterday, I really learned so much from my mom and dad as far as being a, a, a team builder and being um somebody that takes pride in leadership because believe it or not my parents actually run a business that strictly is team building so they basically wow. work with high level ceos and big corporations and work with them on how to wow. um be leaders and how to uh create create teamwork 
and do all these different programs with them to help them, you know, excel and see that effective, um, see how effective it, it can be in one day activities or two day activities. And wow. by doing all these different workshops. And when I was younger, I would just be on drives with them and I'd hear them talking back and forth and hear them strategizing and, he and watch them build that business of that. And I think I was able just to soak up all this knowledge over the years, not really knowing it until all of a sudden game, I was huh? in it. And then I would be in these conversations with my, with, with my mom and dad. I'd be like, oh, wow, like we're doing something. We're, we, our jobs are very similar, actually. Yeah. Um, and they so were just that, me being a student of the game, dog. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say, it sounds like you're getting it just through osmosis. This, you know, you were yeah. just soaking it up. Um, like, so, so your parents, they were talking about like super high level, a lot of it's like, there's got to be psychology involved in that. There's got to be spirituality involved in that. There's got to be emotions involved in that. What, what, like, what were some of like, and, and were you initially like, what, what was your, like, how did you take to it? Were you kind of like, Oh, like mom and dad, they're fucking annoying. They run their dumb business. Like, or were you kind of like keeping your ear to it going, it's interesting. Did you agree or disagree at a young age? Like, how did you feel about just being a fly on the wall for, for, yeah, that's a great question. I think that, I think that because what they were doing was so human and it was about working with humans that it, it didn't go, you know, over my head. I think it was information that I'd always take in willingly and and just have a general interest to it because it's human nature. They're talking about human nature. They're talking about how humans function out and how humans get along and how humans work together and in, able to in order to build something bigger. So when they're talking about working with, you know, the CEO of, you know, Coca-Cola or whatever it is and how to like, you know, do that, maybe some of those specific details weren't sticking but the general idea and purpose of team building and leadership always you know was something that that kind of was just there and I think embedded into my body and embedded into my brain in a really in a really impactful way so I don't think it ever was something that was I was like oh this is you know annoying to listen to it it was just it was it was, it was human you know it was human right 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 that's cool. That's so, that's super cool to hear yeah. that, that background. Yeah, it's story. pretty awesome. I mean, honestly, I love, it makes I sense. That. I think I, I, like I attribute so much of my little bit of success to my parents as well, just because I feel like in a way, like the, they have, they both each individually have amazing qualities and they have amazing qualities together. And so it's kind of taught me a lot about relationship. It's taught me a lot about, um, even though they're not entrepreneurs, I feel like, or, you know, creative entrepreneurs, I just feel like who they are in their day-to-day -day lives and their consistency and their ability to show up and sacrifice has just like taught me so much about what it actually takes to run a, not only run a family, but run a business. I think that when you're running a business, you're kind of running a family and it's like, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, yeah, I think, really cool. I mean, it, it really does. I mean, you know, you, it really shows you the, you know, the impact of, you know, how, how you're raised and the people you're raised around and, what that really does to your mental state as a, as a human and the way that you, 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 you grow um, as a businessman and as just like somebody that, you know, generally cares about the world. Right. So that's pretty cool. I, I could definitely see that, that impact that they've had on you because you are a great guy. I appreciate that. appreciate that. Um, yeah. So just having spent some time on music video sets myself, having like directed little things for Kyle back in the day, producing everything myself and like, Dude, I remember uh, that. you guys had the thick drone shots too. I remember you had that one really dope drone shot on the roof of downtown, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's we. I worked my my boy Jacob Owens was the one. He he was bringing the like our colonized vision to life, and it was very much his vision. And we were all just collaborating it, figuring out how to do it ourselves. But um, that's you know what's funny is even at that level, and obviously it's like I cared a lot about it. I cared a lot about the product and making sure that it was going to be like the best thing ever for Kyle and like. When you're, try when you're a young artist and you're trying to break through, it's like, you know that those music videos can make it happen for you one way or another. So there's so much pressure. And it's funny because in that, you know, when there's three of us, me, Kyle, and Jake, and there really isn't any pressure when you actually zoom out and think about it, like, I could only imagine what, like, being on some of those sets that you're on, whether it be with literally the biggest stars in the world, like you said, 200 people on set, um, 
just so much shit going on. Like, a, and these shoot days are such long days. And what what kind of like goes into like you prepping? I, like, even on the small level that we were shooting like three person DSLR videos. Like, after these shoots, I would literally have to decompress. I would be like stressed <laughs> out. I would like <laughs> feel like I needed a day off because I was just so emotional. Like, I hope we get the right shot. And so like. I think obviously some of that comes with repetition, but like, just walk us through like how you even prep psychologically for it and, and mentally and like how you, how you prepare yourself to perform at that level. Totally. Um, yeah, I think there's a couple of different components to like the preparation process for me. Um, you know, it all comes from the idea. Number one, you have to be inspired by the idea and you have to, um, man, I think, I think at this point, you know, going into these shoots, you know, I've definitely found myself, I'm a very like in the moment type of guy. So I try and set up my shoots to be as free flow as possible. Obviously I'm always going to have a plan. I'm always going to have a, a very detailed shot list to go into it. Like I will basically break apart my, my treatment and I'll be, I will, I will break down the hours of the day. Um, as far as the usual schedule that most people get on set, I will have my own schedule on, on my, on my little notes on my phone. And I, within those hours, I will basically have my full on wish list of shots that I want to be able to get within hour one to hour two, so on, so on, so on. And it'll be a wish list. So it's like knowing the coverage that I want to get and I will be able to adapt very easily and go off of what that original plan was based on how I'm feeling and what I'm getting. And it really helps that I do come from an editing background because when I first started, I probably edited the first, you know, 150, 200 videos I, I did. And so when you're doing that, you can, you can actually see the edit, edit itself in your head as you go. And that's the most valuable skill in the world I ever learned as a director, because now when it, when it comes to making graphic videos or videos that have a narrative, um, backbone or a huge narrative narrative component i know how how it's going to cut already i can wrap the set at the end of the day and be like i got everything i needed i have a great piece and i can wrap a video at the end of the day and be like i think i got it like let's see better kill this edit so that's one part of it as far as the preparation process and i think the other part is really making sure that like you said man when you get off one of those sets like it is a huge it is a huge come down and it, you have to really uh it's almost like preparing for like war in a sense like like i'm constantly having to train like i gotta stay physically fit i gotta stay mentally fit and you know most of all i just have to continue working on my communication every day because if i'm off and i can't talk about my ideas or be able to express myself as far as the way that I want something to look, then I'm not doing my job. Right. So I have to have done, and that goes also into the conversation of, you know, when I do my tech scouts, which a tech scout is basically after you found your locations or after you found the place, you're going to build your sets. I bring all my keys um, from every key department from, you know, cinematographer to production designer to wardrobe to my producers um, grips and gaffers. Um, I bring all of them in one room and I, and I talk to each of them individually and I get, I get everything off that I have to talk about from that's on my shot list as far as the look, feel, execution, how we're going to do it, the tools we're going to use to make it happen. And then especially work with my first AD to, to make sure that all of that's going to fit within the time that we have. And, um, and then to make sure we're going to stay on budget um, so that, all of a sudden, you know, my company doesn't go under. So it's wow. all of those things that have to be put into one place. And if you do all of your homework beforehand, we all hate homework, but when it's, you know, going towards the better purpose, it makes sense. And when you're passionate about it, it doesn't feel like homework. it's actually a lot of fun for me. I right. really enjoy sitting down and breaking down a treatment and putting together my shot list and getting on the phone and figuring out cool ways of communication where I have like 20 different windows open and I'm texting all my different people and ideas and blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden I'm there on the day of, and I'm like, let's go. Right. Right. That's the cool feeling. Yeah. I, the other thing I wanted to, to touch on too, and, and to dive into a little more is like, obviously you got your start doing 
free videos, you know, for whoever you could shoot a video for, right? How did you like, what was like the turning point that got you to that? Like, cause the thing is, is I, I think about the DSLR videos that I worked on, right? And yeah. then like to, to elevate as a director, producer to that like next cusp of like, can you even handle, cause I just know a lot of video directors out there where you could give them $5,000 or you could give them $50,000 and you'll get the same video, you know? So like, how did you, what, what was the turning point there from like, maybe talk about a couple of the early videos you did and then that time where you like leveled up. Dude, my- my mindset was always based on growth and it was always based on reinvesting into yourself. I didn't make money off videos for the first, you know, three or four years, maybe five years because I was focused on being able to up my brand and I was focused on reinvesting that money into making my next project look that much bigger. So when I'd approach an artist and say, yo dude, I need 500 more dollars so it can look like this. That $500 was equivalent to 5,000. And every time it was just a simple math of knowing that if I can, and especially knowing what those tools did or what that extra thousand dollars would do, because I can get this toy and I can elevate it in this sense, I was just always focused on elevating my production value and making sure that my shit looked bigger than what I was spending the money on. So that by the time that I got to real budgets, I could then have a little bit more freedom and flexibility as far as like where I wanted to go with the piece and what my focus was. So it was always about reinvesting and not focused on, you know, trying to get a dollar at that point. It was about trying to stretch that dollar and make it a hundred, but for the on screen, the bigger yeah. money would come later. You right. know what I mean? Like you want to, you want to be focused on like what the big picture is here. And if you can't take yourself out of that, small minded mindset of just trying to make, you know, or of trying to profit on something that small, then you'll never be able to get to that bigger level. You have to be able to dream and think about it in a business sense. And like, I think it just goes for all art though, because like you should never feel like entitled to, because you think you're good. You know, if you're, if you're a painter and you're like, I painted this and I think this is amazing. I deserve to make $1,500 off this. Well, ha- why? What, what, is, what, is, what is the thing that's validating that? You need to create a brand and you need, to, you need to create perception behind that piece that makes it bigger than just paint on a canvas. And, and in order to like elevate that, like what, what is gonna be your way in? And so I always thought about it from a business and that's why I always branded my pieces with Colin Silly Presents. And then directed by Colin Tilly or whatever it was, because I had to make something that was bigger than myself. Right. And that's a, that's a business. And that's, and that's, that's something that, that is so much bigger. So then people start paying for the name over what the product is in a sense, you know what I mean? And, and, right. and that's, and that's really, really important thing as far as being able to elevate. Right. Right. I hope that answers yeah, no, I, I guess I'm kind of looking for something even like a little more, I want you to be a little, even a little more specific about like, or just like, what was that one, that first kind of breakout video where you're like, wow, my foot's in the door. My, I'm like in the game. For sure. I mean, and look, it, 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 it's always, you know, stepping stones, right? So, I mean, like when I, the first video I did was for, for Niles from the cataracts and I use, and I did that for absolutely free. I borrowed a friend's camera. I went out and shot it. I learned how to edit off YouTube tutorials for Final Cut Pro. And then I went to the studio with him and I'm editing it. And then I meet like, uh, I think it was Vita Wita in there or, or Shady Nate or one of the really dope Bay Area rappers at the time. And I'm like, yo, I can shoot your video. And so then every wait, time- So, so just- did Niles convince you that you were going to be a good video director or like, like how, how did that, how, like, were you like- It was like a mutual thing, bro. Because then right after that, me and David and went out and shot Murder, She Wrote um, for the Cataracts. And like, then like David was putting like his thought process in on how things should look and feel and, you know, thinking so left field. And I was able to take that mindset and apply it to like Bay Area rappers. And then all of a sudden, Bay Area rappers were like, hold on, this shit looks big for the $200, $500 I'm spending. But and it's like a left field concept or it's doing something that's different that we haven't seen or felt before. And then I remember the one that really basically kind of like, then I was doing stuff for Young L, like independent, like for just Young L. And then uh, Lil B hit me and Lil B was like, yo, let's go. And we did, we can go down. 
And now we can go down was like a big moment because it was the first video sounds funny, but to make it on the top of world star at the time, wow. world star was such a huge platform to where if you had a video on top of world star, like that means people were watching that shit. It would get a couple million views. And based off of we can go down, Tyga saw it and Tyga called me and was like, yo, let's work. I love that video you did for Lil B. It was different. So then I started working with Tyga and, you know, we were doing stuff on the low low. And shortly after that, um, Tyga called me with Chris Brown on the phone and was like, yo, we're, we got to shoot deuces. Wow. And dude, I did deuces for $2,500. Like no one knows that shit, but I did deuces for $2,500. We shot no bullshit for Chris Brown the night before for another 2,500. And it was just like, dude, this was the time of music videos though. This is when nobody was spending anything. Wow. And so I got- That was that weird, that was that weird era, right? Where it was like, Chris Brown was a superstar, but then he was kind of doing this like rap mixtape with Tyga. Bro, this is like the Jordan Tower days. This is like the Jordan Tower days. You know what I mean? Like, like this is like when like fools were like out there shooting fucking hood videos and all of a sudden like all big artists were even doing these low, low, low budget videos because it was kind of the thing to do, right? Right. So I, like I said, I got in when the lottery ticket was low. And after I did this video for Chris Brown, Deuces, that basically was the first video of mine to really make it on TV and get awards and all this shit. Wow. And, and um, I basically went on a run with Chris from there and I did his next 30 some videos from features to his own singles. And it was wow. basically always a single bid. Like Chris would be like, no, nah, Colin has to do the video. And so that goes with the idea of relationships, man. I mean, relationships are, your network is your net worth, as they say. Right. And that's not, until the Chris Brown videos, that's when I actually like saw like my first like real check. You know, I was like, right. oh shit, I'm on like big video set right now. I have a techno crane, I have a full crew. Like this is kind of a little over my head. But it was right. so dope because I was working with somebody like Chris that always had a big vision. And so that's why we did all these videos and we really like made each other better. And then Chris started directing his own stuff. But right. I was so lucky to be able to work with somebody that had such a vision like that, you know, and like trusted me to go in there with my team and execute these ideas and like really add to his brand. And it was a beautiful thing. Did you do, so, did you do any research about like, when the production got significantly bigger, you men- men- mentioned like Techno Crane. When the, when the production like was just, like let's say you got this crazy budget and now it was like, you got to figure out like how to put that in front of the camera. Like, did you just fake it till you ma- made it? Or did you like do your research? Did you study? Did you figure out? Cause it's like, in order to get a look like that, you got to be able to, pr- like that's what I always look for. And from the management side is like, can this director produce at this level, you know? Yeah. Well, dude, I mean, it's, it's, it's about your team. I mean, I was very, very fortunate and I was working with uh, my producer, Andrew Listerman at the time. And he was invested in me early on and he saw that potential and he had produced stuff for other big directors at the time. And he was just like, look, I think we can work together and make some great stuff. So as at the same time that I was doing a lot of research and working on trying to get my brand up. Um, he came in and we basically started collaborating and he, that's how we started riveting entertainment. And so we basically just started rocking together and I, I had somebody that was specializing in, you know, high, creating high budget productions and how to put more resources in, into the thing. So at the same time, both of our, our eyes were like, oh my gosh, look how we can make this even better and bigger. Look how we can make this better and bigger. It was never about how much money can we make off this motherfucker. Right. No. That was never it. It was like, how can we continue? We want to be known. We right. wanted to get it. Like we wanted our art to be seen in, a, in, in, in on a big level. And when you find a team that has that same idea and isn't focused on an immediate dollar, then it can work. So in my, so what I would say to you, you know, young young managers that are just starting out and trying to find, you know, with their artists and they're trying to find you know, younger directors to do it. It's like, do they have the team to support them? Because if they have a production team to support their vision, then all of a sudden they're going to be able to be beasts. You know, if they're already working with these resources, then you surround them with other people to help them enhance their vision. How is that going to work? Right, right. Because the producer is the one that, for people that don't know how music videos work, producers are the ones that kind of like, 
tie it all together, right? A hundred percent. And they're the ones so, that kind of like can can see, can essentially itemize an idea, right? They, they, they this is the idea, and they know the, this is the type of equipment we need. This is the type of lighting, etc. Do they're the they are the ones that will take your treatment and break it down in an Excel budget document and itemize it by budget and crew and everything that it needs, and that's what basically adds up to that you know overall budget. And, but, you know, the thing is, is you also need to be, in order to be a good producer, you have to be extremely creative because you aren't just like getting to throw around money. You have to be able to put your money in to places in order to maximize. You have to be a professional negotiator. You have to be able to, you know, go in and like, you know, really figure out how to make $1, $10. Right. And if you can do that across the line, and make a ten thousand dollar budget look like a hundred thousand. Then the next time you can go ask for a twenty thousand dollar budget because it'll look like a hundred and fifty. And then all of a sudden people are like, "Oh, this dude's shooting a hundred and fifty thousand dollar videos. That's what we got to pay him." Right. Right. And it's like that's what we did. Yep. It's awesome, dude. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, it's crazy. Actually, when you when you put, when when you put it like that, it makes so much sense because that's exactly what the goal was all along. You know what right, I mean? Right. Um, so getting into the game, did you have any like mentors? Did you, did, did anybody kind of like give you a, like a foot or was it always For just sure. direct to artist? No, I definitely did. Um, I was very, 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 very fortunate enough to meet um, Taj. And Taj was a director that I looked up to um, because he was from the Bay Area. And at the time, his mentor was Anthony Mandler, who was another one of my you know, favorite directors. And Taj you know, had done uh, Rihanna, Don't Stop the Music, and he had done like Tracks a Million in the Jacka um, from the Hood, which was like my favorite video because I was from the Bay Area, and it was this beautiful black and white piece. And honestly, that's like what inspired me to make Deuces. I was like, I'm gonna make the sickest black and white piece. Like, I wanna be able to embody that. So. Like, I kept on hitting Taj up over MySpace and being like, dude, let me come work for you, blah, blah, blah. You know the game. Yeah. And um, he called me. And he was just like, yo, dude, I'm, I'm going to be in the Bay Area, like, next week. Like, let's link up and, and talk. And I ended up, like, filming him walking around the city and shit. But we ended up having a good vibe. And he was like, come out to L.A. Like, you can come stay with me. And, bro, like, literally, like, I hopped in my fucking Buick, you know, drove to LA a couple of days later and I stayed on his couch in like in 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 uh in Santa Monica for a couple of months and I was so fortunate to be able to go on his sets I remember I got to go on this set for this Nas video called Hero I think and I got to like see him work with like Nas on like a big you know production in the middle of downtown LA and I was like what the fuck is going on fire and then um you know, a little bit later, he started to let me start editing for him. And so then I got to start editing a director's work that was really doing incredible stuff and had this very unique directing style. And I was able to basically, you know, work with him and hear his mind mindset and edit these videos and being able to edit his videos made it so that every time I'd go on set to direct my own thing, I'd be that much better because I saw what didn't work and what worked from the pieces that he was shooting. Wow. And um, it was a really, really amazing thing. And I, you know, I'll always be so thankful of, um, you know, Taj reaching out to me and, and being such an incredible mentor during those times. And, you know, we've always stayed friends throughout all these years and it's been an, an incredible thing. So um, it's super cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. So oh my God. Yes. Here, wait one second. This is yeah. awesome. My, my merch just came. A fire. What's up, my G? Dog, check this out. Boy in the castle. Fire. We That's... out here fully rocking right now. Is that all I'm embroidered? Like... Yeah, dude. It's puff embroidered. Too, too clean. Too <sighs> clean. Too clean. Uh, okay, so anyway, we were in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, fire. Now you got some Boy in the Castle merch to rep. Amazing. Um, we'll talk about Boy in the Castle in a second. I'm trying to think. What, oh, um, we're talking about your mentor, Taj. I actually know. I, I met Taj. He's a great dude. Great dude. Um, shout out Taj, man. 
Um, shout out to Todd, man. Such a good guy, man. Such a good guy. But you know what's what I noticed that's interesting about these like mentorship relationships. Um, and a lot of people, like even close friends of mine, have talked to me about like, oh, how do you get a mentor? And to be honest, I don't even know. I, I, like my mentor Ryan Leslie, like I feel like our relationship kind of just developed into that, you know. And I think a lot of times, what, what I'm realizing is like, is there? I, I want to be really specific about passing that rope back. Oh, dope. dope. So you kind of just you share the vibes. You you keep it create created like like create that extended family of all your creative partners and stuff people that are going to help kind of like build the dream exactly um what was it about like your relationship with todd or taj did did like you provide i mean you, you you said you edited his videos like did you provide were you like steady like thinking like oh like i gotta like provide value for this cat because he's gonna help me like get my foot in the door it was i think that was kind of like I think I was just really trying to soak up experience and I was trying to soak up the world a little bit more. So it was so incredible for me to just be on these sets and not be so like, so that when later when I would do it, I wouldn't walk in blind. I would know how they function. And I was asking questions and I was getting to know people on set. And then editing was just, you know, that was a, a, all the blessing I needed. I was never under the expectation for, you know, Taj to pass the torch down and let me take on, you know, work. Like that's just not how this industry works. Uh, this industry is about building relationships and, um, you know, getting to, getting to just inspire each other. And I think that's really what it was about. I was, I was so inspired from being in such a great productive atmosphere around such a positive guy and individual who was really doing his thing that that's all I needed. That's, that's all that I wanted. And that, that way, when it was time for me to go do, direct my stuff, he was like, go, go kill it. And Fine. like, he would be somebody that I could talk to about my process. And, um, it was somebody that had the like-mindedness that was rooting for me and being able to have somebody that's already in the game. That's just rooting for you. That's all I can ask for as a creative man. Yeah, it's true, man. So cool. So cool. Um, yesterday when we, we caught up on FaceTime for a bit, you, you, we were talking a little bit about like the, the dichotomy between like art, artistry and business and stuff like that. And you just started touching on some really, really like crazy dope ass points. I don't know if you remember yeah. any of them, but like, obviously you have some vibes on that. What, um, if you could just kind of like dive into that just concept or whatever and how. Like what you think? No, for sure. I mean, dude, like, look, like I run a business. I run, I run a, I run a business as a director that's Colin Tilly, but I also run a business as a production company now called Boy in the Castle. And Boy in the Castle is a, is a, is a, you know, full service production company that's fully functioning and, you know, has, is, has a lot of people working. And I think that, you know, as an artist and as a director, you have to be privy with the concept of business. You have to accept the business. You have to love the business. And you have to know that there's a whole game within the business along with the game of creation. And if you can make that game fun, and if you can make it challenging, and if you can be creative with it, then it's like you're hitting all sides of what you want to be doing. Because I genuinely, I genuinely really, really, really love the business side. If that's all I was doing, I would be super happy. But the fact that I get to still direct and let that live in the forefront of what I do, um, I really am I'm, I'm able to like kind of please all the emotions that I have in my body and like hit every side. You know, I can wake up and I'd be, I could be like, I want to sit here. I'm going to write for two hours. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to read. I'm going to just, you know, dive into the, the, the director side of my brain. But then I get to sit here and I get to, you know, think about the business and I get to think about how I'm going to grow the business. And I get to, you know, talk with my partners about how, like, you know, strategize. I get to strategize with my best friends who are my partners, um, Johnny and Nico. And we get to really, you know, dream together. And if you don't have somebody to dream with about the big picture of business and actually how it's going to get done, then you're kind of just going to live a straight flat line. And I never want to be 
on a flat line. I never want to be on a trajectory of just going like this. It's not any fun. Right. I want to find steps to be able to, you know, keep running up. And it really comes down to being a challenge based individual. If you're in the industry in any sense, you thrive from the idea of a new challenge. Right. I know you know that coming from, from, from what you do as a manager and from, you know, being so heavy in the music business, that's what it's all about. We want new challenges to have to overcome and being in the creative arts, there's no cap to it. We can keep going. And that's why I've had so much fun using this uh, later part of my career of building a business at the same time of, of, of directing because it all is a game. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's cool. Do you ever find like that balance kind of being diff difficult when it comes to like artistry versus business or I, it, your attitude? I can already tell that it's like you welcome every single challenge with a smile on your face. And like, yeah. you, have, you can tell that like, you you have an amazing attitude and like you're not afraid obviously of the work and stuff like that but then there's that dichotomy of the artistry and the you know that gets a little tricky for people and and I think that like yeah. you mentioned something about being a successful business person is how, how does that like being successful in the arts like w w w how does like how does that kind of um how does that impact you it's just like like you know how much does that drive you I guess well, I think that, you know, this is a little bit of what I touched on uh, yesterday in the sense that, like, I think that when you first start out and, and you're an artist and there's something really fun about being rebellious and being somebody that says, you know, I don't give a fuck about, you know, the biz like the business. I just want to create art. Like, you know, I just want to you know, like book the system, like, right. Like there's, that. De there's definitely an attitude like that in like the, the indie world and in the, in the indie world of music and in the indie world of all of that shit. But the thing is, is I always wanted to be an artist where my work was seen. I always wanted to be an artist where my work was impact, like an impact, whether it was an emotional impact where I could really affect somebody's life and in some way or another by telling a story or hitting a certain emotion that they can relate to or just by creating an all around experience that made you feel good. And in order to do that, you have to have a successful business model set up behind that. And um, once you embrace that and you, and you put the, you put the idea that art and business should coexist together in a, in a, in a very seamless way, then all of a sudden, all of a sudden your art becomes so much more because you have more access to materials. Your art is seeing more people. And if you, and then when your business is running, you're also making money and you continue to invest into cooler and cooler ideas. I mean, still, even with Boy in the Castle, Boy in the Castle has been a very successful business, but a lot of the, 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 the actual profit that is made off Boy in the Castle is used to reinvest into new projects. And that comes down to the idea that like, I'm still here 10 years later and I'm not thinking about how to put money in my pocket. I'm thinking about how to put money into bigger ideas for bigger money and for big and for, for, for access and time to be able to do the projects that I really want to do and to hit, hit points in my career that I haven't even touched yet. Right. I want to make films, but no one knows who the fuck I am in the film world. And I'm totally fine with that. I like being the underdog in an entire new industry. That's yeah. a new challenge. For me. That's the next 10 years for me. Right. And that's exciting. And the business goes along just uh, along with that. And so like, you know, I think that when you have the love for business, all of a sudden your mind opens up to so many other ideas. That's why I started the wine label. That's why I've invested into other cool companies that are, you know, that are, that are startups as well, that are tangible and something that you can feel and something that you can hold. Like I want to be part of stuff that I can watch grow and that I can see, you know, overcome challenges. Right. So I think all of that put together is all supposed to be there. Art is supposed to be seen. Right. Right. You want to talk, dive a little bit into like some of your outside investments and just different things that you're you're passionate about that you're you're working on right now. I think diversifying obviously is so cool. Like, you know, especially if you're afforded success and you know in the yeah. financial realm and stuff like that. It's like figuring out ways you can, you know, put your money to good use and stuff like that. What do you got going Def on? Definitely. I mean, look, like, I, I like, I um. 
something that I always wanted to do and what I've always dreamed up with my, with, with my friends, with, with Johnny and Nico, who are my partners, was being able to invest into the development of more material. So something that we've done over the last five years is essentially created a writer's room where we have a series, or we have all these different scripts being developed and we're paying writers, you know, all, all over and our friends who are really good writers to develop material for us because we want to be able to, once we get in the, into the feature film world, we want to be able to have the material there ready to go so that we can expand our company from just a production service company to like a studio level um, company to where we are producing these, these movies. And that's kind of the big dream. So that's always come first. And then along the way, I mean, one of the first companies I invested in was Ember, which is uh, temperature heating mugs and temperature heating technology. And I remember I was so fortunate enough. I was, um, when I was at the last company that I was at London Alley, who are still my incredible friends and really great people. Um, my friend, Andrew Leros was like, dude, um, you got to check, check this out. Like I just, one of my neighbors is this guy named Clay and Clay started this, um, company where it has temperature heating, uh, he has temperature heating technology. And so we had Clay come into the office and I remember I was so blown away by this guy's presentation and the fact that he had all of the, um, patents for his technology all around the map for everything, even stuff for the future. I was like, oh man, this thing is going to blow up. And if I can be an, a Series A investor in on this while it's early, that could potentially be something huge. And so I've had so much fun watching that company grow over the last you know, three or four years and become this multi-million dollar freaking company that's doing these incredible things based on this one, one guy's idea. And wow. so that's, the, that's what I'm saying is I like, I, I, that's why I love business. And I love the idea of presentation. I love the idea of being able to conceptualize an idea and make it reality. I saw him when he just had, when he just had an idea. Right. And, um, so that's, that's super cool to, to me to be able to um, witness. So, and it's so, so inspiring got, because now, what'd you say? No, no, no. Let's go ahead. Well, well, now it's just awesome because even that one presentation and I've made other investments over the last couple of years, but it was always like, I, I basically came up for a rule for myself. I was like, can I physically hold this? Can I physically touch this? Can I physically like see this doing well? I'm a little bit like scared of the stock market. And so I've never put into it because I didn't really know want, want to put the time into learning. But if I can be passionate about the thing that I'm investing into, then that's like, or if it's something that I care about or it's something that I use in my daily, daily life, then it's something that I want to be a part of. Right. And so like basically came up with this rule for when coming up with, when I'm asking for money for people to invest in, it's like, can you feel it? Can yeah. you touch it? What's the presentation? What is the thing here that's going to say, I'm going to go to my bank account tonight and I'm going to transfer this money into your idea. Right. Cause it can't just be an idea on a piece of paper. It has to be something bigger than that. That's going to make you want to invest. Right. What are those things that are, are, it's almost like it's gotta be something where it's like, Oh, this is almost too good to be true. If this actually makes this money, I'll make this much. That's incredible. Sure. As an investor, you're always going to be willing to take a risk. That's what you're doing. You may, you may not ever see that money again, but right at least the chances of actually making money or being part of a business to um, businesses growth in a really beautiful way. and something that you believe in. That's that, that's what it's all about. Right. Right. Amazing, bro. Amazing. It's dope to get a little of your investment thesis as well, man. I think, um, yeah, I just, you're such a, such a solid individual. And I just feel like, well, it's the same thing, bro. Like when you're, when you're, when you're representing your artist, you know, how do you position, how do you, you have that same mindset. It's like, how do you position this artist for other people to invest ideas or other people to want to collaborate on, you know, ideas or um, collaborations or whatever it is. You have to get people to want to invest into that artist as well. It's the same approach. It's, it's a brand. You've created a brand and, and you've got to get people to believe in that brand. Right, right, right. Yeah, man. I feel like you've, you've given, you've given it, you've given me your all. So I don't want, you know, I want to be respectful of your time. I think that's a pretty good place to end, but um, no, bro, unless there's awesome. anything else you, you, you want, like any, any, like, 
any piece of advice you even have for like young filmmakers and, and stuff like that? Like it's kind of a cliche question, but I think, you know, at the end no, of the day, it's always about passing it back. I think really like the thing that we'll, we'll leave this on, man, is like there's, there's a real power in, in teamwork and there's a real power in really believing in people around you to enhance your abilities and to enhance your, your overall dream goal or whatever you're trying to accomplish. And I think it's a really intimidating thing when you're a younger filmmaker or just a new filmmaker in general or a young creative or a young entrepreneur to put your vulnerability out on the table and say, this is my idea to other people to contribute to. It's a very scary thing just saying your idea out loud from keeping it in your, in your mind or writing it on a piece of paper. I just, I remember the, the nerves that I would get when I used to submit treatments into labels. And I probably submitted hundreds of treatments before one even got awarded. But I remember that I was like the vulnerability of taking it from your mind and putting it on something that other people can read and see your idea. It's a scary thing. But the more that you do it, the easier it gets and the more second nature it should be. And then the more the other people are going to want to collaborate with you on that idea, the more you feel comfortable reaching out to other people to be a part of it, you know? Right. So right. I think that's the, I think that's really what it's all about because look, man, at the end of the day, like even if you are shooting a video off an iPhone, you, you, you need other people, you need other people to, to collaborate with and to share ideas and to throw sp spaghetti against the wall. And I really truly believe in the, the idea of throwing spaghetti against the wall in conversations. And even if one piece of, you know, spaghetti sticks, then cool. That that's at least a base for everybody to be able to build off of. And maybe that one will slide off and it'll just start with just, you know, spaghetti sauce, but at least you got something on there. Right. And at least you're throwing shit. You're hearing your idea set out loud. And there's just something, there's something really like precious about that. Um, and I think that's the art of, of collaboration. Right, right. So what's next? What's next for you? My couch. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, we dude, didn't talk honestly, about coronavirus at all, which is kind of amazing. No, we didn't. And we shouldn't. Honestly, yeah. bro, right now, it's just about continuing to get better and using this time to continue to get better. And, um, you know, thinking about, I mean, bro, like I literally was... I did this the other day, bro. I literally sat upside down on my fucking like this and just was, and just looking at my room from a different perspective and new ideas were coming because I, I was, I was, I was, you know, willing to put myself in that position. And wow. when, when, when you force yourself to just put handcuffs on for a second, you have to think about what am I going to do right now? that's going to please my, 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 the, my creative needs or my business needs, you'll find ways to apply this. You just have to look and you have to look hard enough and be disciplined about it. Yeah. I found a lot of, there's so much truth in that. I mean, I've just even noticed even with Kyle and like, you know, we had this album like ready, ready to go. And now it's forcing us to think about the creative completely differently, which is almost kind of like giving us the perfect amount of constraints to like, really operate and be super super creative and do super unique shit so i think that um yeah what you're saying it just rings so true to me man yeah that's what it's all about man well yeah bro this was so awesome and um you know let's fucking get it i think well, i actually think we except for when i got up to answer the door i think this whole thing all the way through is going to play out really nice because we didn't really like you know fuck with fuck with time at all Absolutely. Yeah, no, thank you so, so much for your time, man. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, bro. Thanks. Thank you, bro. That was hella fun. I, I enjoy it. It was a great conversation. Um, inspiring for me um, to be able to reflect. And thank you so much for the great questions and just the, the thoughtfulness that went into this. So, you know, let's, 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 let's end it like that. Happy Friday. Much love, my bro. Yeah. And, uh, we'll talk super soon. Right back at you, bro. Take care, man. Bye, Peace. bro. Peace.